First reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 to 11. Brothers and sisters, such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything is coming from us, rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter but of spirit, for the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, was so glorious that the children of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of its glory that was going to fade, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit be glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation was glorious, the ministry of righteousness will abound much more in glory. Indeed, what was endowed with glory has come to have no glory in this respect because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was going to fade was glorious, how much more will what endures be glorious? The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord, our God, and worship at His footstool, holy is He. Holy is the Lord our God. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel among those who called upon his name, they called upon the Lord, and he answered them. Holy is the Lord our God. From the pillar of cloud he spoke to them, they heard his decrees and the law he gave them. Holy is the Lord our God. O Lord, our God, you answered them, a forgiving God you were to them though requiting their misdeeds. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord, our God, and worship at His holy mountain, for holy is the Lord, our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Gospel Reading Matthew Chapter 5, Verses 17-19 Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law, until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord The New Law or the Law of the Gospel Commentary from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraphs 1965-1968 to The new law or the law of the gospel is the perfection here on earth of the divine law, natural and revealed. It is the work of Christ and is expressed particularly in the Sermon on the Mount. It is also the work of the Holy Spirit and through Him it becomes the interior law of charity. I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel. I will put my laws into their hands and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The new law is the grace of the Holy Spirit given to the faithful through faith in Christ. It works through charity, it uses the Sermon on the Mount to teach us what must be done and makes use of the sacraments to give us the grace to do it. If anyone should meditate with devotion and perspicacity on the sermon our Lord gave on the Mount, as we read in the Gospel of St. Matthew, he will doubtless find there, the perfect way of the Christian life, This sermon contains all the precepts needed to shape one's life. The law of the gospel fulfills, refines, surpasses, and leads the old law to its perfection. In the Beatitudes, the new law fulfills the divine promises by elevating and orienting them toward the kingdom of heaven. It is addressed to those open to accepting this new hope with faith, the poor, the humble, the afflicted, the pure of heart, those persecuted on account of Christ and so marks out the surprising ways of the kingdom. The law of the gospel fulfills the commandments of the law. The Lord's Sermon on the Mount, far from abolishing or devaluing the moral prescriptions of the old law, 
releases their hidden potential and has new demands arise from them, it reveals their entire divine and human truth. It does not add new external precepts, but proceeds to reform the heart, the root of human acts, where man chooses between the pure and the impure, where faith, hope, and charity are formed and with them the other virtues. The Gospel thus brings the law to its fullness through imitation of the perfection of the Heavenly Father, through forgiveness of enemies and prayer for persecutors, in emulation of the divine generosity.